Hello everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Weekly News Update where I talk to you guys about the coolest custom creations I happen to see people building in LEGO throughout this last week. Like always, I show you way more than just 10 creations, and like always, it is not in an order from best to worst. And like always, all the links to these builds are in the description below if you want to check out the builders for yourself. The custom model instructions that went up in our web store this week is the Doom Slayer from Jared. Long story short, it's an amazingly detailed and extremely intricate model that could totally beat up your model. If you like to see weird, crazy connections, I highly recommend you take a closer look at this guy. www.brickfault.toys is the web store. And now let's jump into some honorable mentions before we get to the top 10. Conan Zwanenberg titles this Cuddly Toys, the Mario Collection. And having spent several years in Southern California, I believe the correct description for this is Totes Adorbs. Buttloaf Builds calls this Eshu. The figure is both intriguing and somewhat haunting. Carter Witz built this deceptively simple looking build called the Ravine. It's an excellent bit of forced perspective there. This is Commander Bly from Caleb Saw. Love all the different colors. You know exactly where this is in the Star Wars universe. And Dave Catella titled this Daft Punctuation. Never thought what their spacecrafts might look like, but here's a pretty good example. And perhaps I haven't been keeping up with some of the latest sets and some of the newest pieces, but what are those trans orange pieces on Joxon's Cyber Devil? This is Arrow O'Conan's new century city block. I love a building built with primarily yellow there. And the Brick Artisan has an extremely clever idea of making an outline for a satellite dish. I believe it's handlebars and droid arms for the most part. Woomy World calls this Menanengal Dissonance. And I'm pretty sure the Doom Slayer was designed for taking out guys like this. And then I might spend a little bit more time on this model just because it is so insane. We have an unfinished build, it looks like, called Heimdall's Final Windscreen by Lech Kulina. And honestly, I think this guy just takes bricks to the next level. The connections are so solid and so absolutely mind-bogglingly intricate that it kind of makes my head spin. Can't wait to see what this final product looks like, but it's stuff like this that really makes me love coming back every week and doing this video. Here's a build that looks deceptively simple at first. The Red Space Cat built the USS Spirit. I guess those V-22 Ospreys just can't quite leave the LEGO world just yet. These look excellent in micro form. And then from General Heroes, this is the GOAT. I believe that stands for the type of giant artillery you have on the back of this train. But there's an awesome combination of different stylistic choices in this rather colorful serious and also cartoony diorama. Love the minimalist letter design on the side of the train. The station buildings look excellent and I've never quite seen a build design for a tree quite like that in the sand green. The cylinder design for the tower here from Jacob Escher looks amazing. This is called Lonely Water Tower. And then from Mr. CP60 this is the duel at the bamboo shrine. Sort of reminds me a scene from Ninja Scroll. Hope I'm not dating myself. When loose bricks are used to to imitate the ocean. It's often done with uh, one by one plates or something, but we have a lot of loose larger bricks as well as some connector clip pieces in white for the frothy foam. It's an interesting idea and I like it a lot. Aero O'Conan always has fun techniques for his brick built figs. Too many to get into to even talk about here. Just check him out. And Kevin H's Mechasonic both looks pretty darn accurate to what Mechasonic may look like in Lego bricks. Plus we have some amazing techniques piled on as well. The ears popping through the top and the helmet pieces around the hip joints are my two personal favorite parts. Lestranger Absurd gave us Edwina scissor hands. Also, there's a bit of Princess Leia thrown in there, I think, a little bit. And this is Gary Prosser's Lego Jurassic Park mock, and he just happened to capture a wonderful little scene here. Now jumping on to the top 10 from Jonas Cram. This is the Royal Carriage. Talk about color pop. The two accent colors, gold and pink, maybe don't even count as accent colors. There's more of it than dark brown. But if this little build isn't just a feast for the eyes, just about everything in pearl gold is sloped or slanted or curving in some way. We have some interesting uses for certain pieces. I like the way the horses are decorated and it sort of redefines the term ornate just in general. Next up is from Moko. This is called MF011 Dragoon. Robotic suits of armor are this builder's specialty, I think. And we have a pretty classic 
classic looking Gundam style build, just in the way that the legs are shaped. The head also feels very Gundam like, and, and just the fact that we have big old wings hanging off the back. Before you say anything, yeah, it looks like a lot of this stuff was custom sprayed, and that's just some builder's MO. You tell me if you think it was worth it in this case. I certainly think it is. Moko also has a video of how this thing came together that's also linked in the description below. And then this next build is from a designer who calls themselves Miscellana Builds, and the title is The Mushroom Man. Might seem pretty self-explanatory why it's called the mushroom man you can see all the different builds for different kinds of mushrooms sticking off the sides of this tree stump i believe and then the design for the character himself is just so different and strange i think those are candlestick pieces used for the tall legs he's got some big cartoony looking feet that fur coat piece is backwards which makes up the frill along where his i suppose face would be and it's just a fun and off-putting slightly cartoony figure and then we have another excellent excellent design from Redverse. This is called King Kamza and his Indigo Vortex. This cartoony and anamorphic version of a rabbit I suppose is King Kamza. He's got himself a red shirt, black pants, gold belt, big old gloves, and goggles. The style here is incredibly clean cut and matches up extremely well with this almost snail shell like version of of a hover bike. He's supposed to be some kind of racer, and it's both an extremely interesting design for a speeder bike, and on top of that we have some extremely unique building techniques integrated as well. The flexi tube with the buildable figure feet I think is the main thing that makes up that curve in the center. Also that is an inside out tire I believe that makes up the front headlight. Super excellent, and we're jumping onto another incredibly wonderful color popping build. This is from Marcus Robler, and it is called Raban's Quarry. It's more than just fun colors mishmashed together. There are awesome little building techniques used. I think that is what maybe a mailbox or perhaps a bird feeder over across the fence. Those alternating slope bricks that run back and forth along the house look so good. You can see that there's even some tiles that have been uh, wedged in on their side perfectly flush to match up with that brown wall. The roof is extremely clean cut with all the cheese wedges and there's just something so pleasing about these three colors combined together. But remember that's not normal brown, it's something a little bit nougaty, or maybe they call it dark orange. But either way, it's a great little scene. And now we're looking at a very creative little build called Dead 2K by Bart de Bobler. Looks like we're staring at a little mini advert for aliens that like to eat human brains. I believe that's what all those little tentacle pieces are sticking out, uh, ready to grab brains out of minifigures' heads. The mechanical details are fun, the pink highlights are used in an extremely effective way for both the eyes I think in the front the grabbing tentacles and of course what I'm going to assume are brains that are piling up on either side in the storage pods. And it's a fun combination between some serious mechanical details as well as just an odd and silly kind of goofball idea. We are now jumping onto an expert little micro design from First Order Lego. And it looks like this guy has made excellent use of those little eye prints on the sides of one by one plates. You can see the small sailboat at the base of what looks like a mountain or island, rocky island. The air tanks probably make up a small dock. The crazy wacky hairpiece makes up a fun little tree build and it also color wise matches quite well with the rest of the terrain and the castle itself is simple enough but cuts between a nice use of square and round pieces with little points. Next up is a mecha from Mitsuru Nikaido. I don't know how to pronounce the particular name of this prehistoric creature but this model serves to flesh out a long standing stylistic choice from this designer that I highly recommend you take a closer look at through his flicker to see what I'm talking about. This is, I believe, a crustacean creature that probably existed many millions of years ago. It's a machine style build, which is kind of a, a fun way that this designer decides to build out more intricate organic details. Maybe my favorite feature is the use of those offset underside pieces of skis that you can see on the ribbed section of this creature, but really there's a lot of fun uses of ski pieces as well as clips, pneumatic tubes, bucket handles, and just a whole heck of a lot more. Now I know some of you guys get a little bit upset when I include digital builds in the top 10, 
but if you were ever to forgive me on that front, this would be the build to forgive it. Look at this absolutely insane model from Admiral Plakbar. It's titled Lucre Hulk Class Droid Control Ship. Hope I said that right, but this should be a familiar looking design for any Star Wars fan. He says this thing is built at a 1 in 1455 scale, which believe it or not is actually pretty close to two impaired's Imperial Star Destroyer that we have up in the web store. So it's kind of funny to think that this giant digital model would actually in universe scale pretty well with what we have as established for nanoscale. The techniques look surprisingly sophisticated for such a large model, and I am very curious to know how the angles of this ship were calculated on the inside in terms of uh, internal connections. Before you ask, no, we're not gonna build anything like this IRL. We're just gonna sit back like you guys and enjoy this absolutely massive digital render of a huge, huge, huge Lego model. Number 10, the final build for top 10 is also a model from Jonas Cram. Here is Wolfholm. It's an extremely detailed, almost decrepit looking build for an icy stone house. Couldn't quite call it a castle, but we have some interesting building techniques that really make the rough rock pop well from the walls. Those toothed bracket pieces that crisscross along the corners have an interesting effect, and so do the offset jumper pieces that are cutting along the edge of the roofs. Snow and icicles are hanging off of just about every corner, which is a great effect. It really does make everything feel quite cold here. And there's some interesting design choices used just in small details along the edge. The balcony has those hair ponytail pieces turned upside down. I enjoyed the leaning supports for the drying fishing rack. Jonas blocked off the underside of that arch piece with a couple of tiles, which is an odd choice. And I've never seen this piece used as what I'm going to assume is steam coming out from the top of this little chimney. That's a great use for that relatively new display piece in Trans Clear. It is an icicle hanging off at an angle now. And I don't know, there's just detail after detail after detail that you could really focus on and drool over for this icy model. Anyways, guys, that is it for the top 10 builds of the week. By far, this is my favorite thing to do each week. Talk to you guys about cool custom creations and weird creative ideas people are having in the custom building lego world if you enjoy our content you can always like or subscribe check out the web store do whatever you want to do thank you so much for sticking around to the very very end and we'll see you next time at brick vault yeah!